Jesse from Jesse Marie Does Stuff here on Flosstube, and I am coming to you on this Thursday, May 2nd, 2019, with my next update video. Daylight, dollar short. Um, <laughs> so I did film yesterday, no computer problems, um, more weather related issues. And the weather is crazy in the country right now, uh, so I'm not going to talk about how beautiful it is today. But it's sunny, and I feel like it hasn't been sunny in a long time. <laughs> Certainly not on filming days, and so I am full on taking advantage. So here we are with some natural light, finally. Uh, settle in, folks. There's quite a lot to talk about. Um, I know that it's it's mania, which good luck to everybody doing mania. Oh, it's so much fun. Um, and since I'm doing monogamania, this shouldn't be the way that it is. But as promised last time, uh, I'm going to run through my School of Magical Stitches and Literature stitching extra credit for May and June today. Um, so it's going to be a little itty bitty mini whip parade. Um, and then I also have like what I've worked on in the last week um, leading up to Mania. Um, and then knits because we didn't talk about knits last time and there's been some developments um, and then I have a couple of books to share and the world's shortest haul maybe not the world's shortest but pretty quick like um, so let's just go ahead and jump right in and we are actually going to start with Q&A I only have one question uh, but it's a question that's come up a few times in the last six months or so, um, and so I thought that I would just finally address it. Um, so Margaret is the one who asked it most recently, and the gist of the question, uh, which kind of is echoed across everybody who's who's asked it, is what is your schedule like that affords you so much stitching progress? And the first thing that you have to know is that I am effectively like a housewife, I don't work outside of the home. Um, it was a mental health decision that my husband and I made a few years ago, um, and it's kind of the the short term solution to a big problem. Um, I'm okay. I just I went through some stuff, and uh, so it just worked out best that I stay home, and we are fortunate enough that that I can do that. Um, I did start a home business a couple years ago, but due to, uh, pricing inflation with DMC, it made it completely unsustainable, um, and something that, um, I'm going to have to rework somehow, but at this point it's been on hiatus for about a year now. Um, it just, it reached a point where I would price people out of being able to afford it and it was already an expensive endeavor. So if you have recently, like within the last year or so, requested to join the Storyteller Collection on Facebook, I have approved nobody. I haven't denied anybody, but I have approved nobody uh, because it's on hiatus um, until I can refigure some things. Uh, I like organizing, I like kidding, and so I just, I need to find a way to make that financially sustainable. Uh, but other than that, that was the only sort of work type thing that I have done in the last few years. Um, so I am effectively a housewife. Um, it's just the two of us and Thor and we don't live in a big house. So maintaining our house is not, it's not a huge task. Um, my office is a huge task, but everything else, like, it's just maintaining. Um, so there's that. So that's kind of what affords me the time to stitch. Um, now, I try not to stitch all day because, first of all, I am prone to burnout, and um, I feel like I really enjoy stitching, but I feel... Uh, not very productive if I spend all day stitching. So what I try to do, uh, we get up around 6.30. 
um, and I get up with, with my husband. Uh, he leaves for work at about 7, and that's when I get in my prime stitching time. So between 7 and 9 o'clock, um, I am having my coffee, I am stitching, that is my happy place, that is my happy time, <laughs> like joy. Um, a lot of times I'll admit I stitch in the quiet because um, I am an INFJ and one of the perks of being an INFJ is that noise kind of gets to me sometimes. Uh, but anyway, um, so quiet, floss tube, music, what have you. So usually till about nine. I am now in the habit of at about nine, I either have breakfast. Um, breakfast has always been a bad habit for me. I am never consistently eating breakfast despite knowing the health benefits of it. Um, and I am also trying to work on my physical self, um, which hopefully will help my mental self. <laughs> so I am, um, I have an elliptical and so I go jump on that for as long as I can survive it. Um, so that's become a, a part of my schedule. Um, then there's usually a small cleaning task that I take care of. Um, and then I usually have lunch and I do a little bit more stitching. There's probably some putzing going on in there where I'm doing nothing. Um, and then I usually stitch in the evenings. Um, it's not always all night, but sometimes it is. Um, sometimes it's just with breaks for dinner. Um, but I do have, I, I am fortunate enough that I can stitch during the day. Um, and I am grateful for that time. Um, it's sanctuary at some times. Um, so that's kind of how that works. Um, I've also developed methods and ways that help me stitch more quickly. Um, you'll see that here in a little bit. Um, yeah, so that's that's how I get stitching done. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think if I have any tips and tricks. And the only thing that I have um, is something that I learned from Carolyn Mazio, and that is if you're trying to get some stitching done, literally turn your phone off. Literally turn it off. There was a time in human history when we weren't attached to these, <laughs> um, but that is an evolutionary development and uh, it helps to turn it off and get some stitching done or put it, put it in another room or put it across the room, whatever. Um, so, but Carolyn Mazio talked about that uh, quite a few years ago now. So there is that. I hope that that answers that question. Um, and let's get on with the works in progress. As expected, a fair few things I've worked on in a week. Um, but that's magical stitches life for you. So up first is my August quilt by Paula Vaughn. This is what it will look like finished. Hopefully at some point this year, if I can get some good time in it. Um, but I was working on this for the homework test last week, which was to work on a building. And so I was working on the siding here of the house in the background. And I had also intended on working on this for extra credit, but I never got to it. Y'all, for the first time ever, I did not complete the extra credit. The stitching extra credit anyway. The book extra credit, like, I don't ever have a prayer um, because I just don't read enough to really get that task accomplished. But the stitching extra credit, I missed two of them. Yeah. Um, so the first one that I missed was the pre-2000 published design. Um, I was going to use this for that. Um, so let me show you that real quick and then I'll talk about the other one I missed. Uh, this is on a 32 count. There's a really weird wrinkle there. wonder what that's from. Anyway, um, 32 count cream Belfast linen. And as I said, I was just working on the siding. I put in a little over 300 stitches over the two days. Um, so there, the rose trellis kind of climbs up here. And so we start getting into some quarter stitches, which are a Paula Vaughn specialty. <laughs> um, and so there was a lot of 
counting and skipping stitches and whatnot. So I got a little bit of the siding in. It's really boring, uh, but nonetheless. Um, and it took me up through Wednesday night. So like there was no way I was going to get another 500 stitches in before Thursday. So there is that. That's my August quilt. So let me go back to this before I forget. The other extra credit that I missed was watching Harry Potter and stitching. Can you believe it? I had two months to watch the movie and I just didn't. Danny and I are trying to watch them together um, because his appreciation for Harry Potter is minimal at best, um, but he will watch the movies with me. So <sighs> we were trying to watch them, but we just, we just ran out of time. Anyway, so Thursday, Thursday, April 25th, that was my birthday. And so I had my first new start of the year. Real quick shout out here to everybody who sent me happy birthday wishes and also for playing along in the JMD SB Day style. Um, it was a lot of fun to see what y'all were working on and to read your justifications for why it was meaningful. So appreciate you guys. So living in my mommily bag, that was a beautiful gift from a couple of very special friends, uh, is my new start. And I started the threads are coming up. There we go. Hope Sampler. This is by Maura Blackburn. And I was so excited to start this. And pretty little needle minder there. That's from Heather, the IPS needle minders. Love this. So excited to start this, you guys. I can't even, can't even explain it. Here are my threads. Uh, these are DMCs on uh, homemade thread cards. Um, but I just, I like these. I like using my threads like this. So there's that. Um, and then my very special thread, which is Gloriana Sumatra. Gorgeous bluey green joy. I mean, just ugh, love it. It definitely made all of that border work much easier to, to bear. So this is on a beautiful fabric from XJU Designs. It is 32 count Belfast in green apple. And this fabric is kind of funny. It's got on the, there's a back because there are, can you see those spots? They're kind of like pink little spots where dye broke or um, some slight speckling. I'm not entirely sure what that is. Um, but they're not on the other side. And so I decided to go with the other side. Um, it, they may be intentional, uh, but I went with the other side. So, uh, this is going to be a big one when she's done. Um, and I love her and yeah, I love her. <sighs> oh, smells good. <laughs> XJ Designs fabric smells so good. So, I ended up working on this for four days. Um, so I started it on my birthday and then I was able to join the virtual stitchers connect and stitch for a little while uh, on, on Thursday. I worked on this on Friday. Saturday I worked on it for a tiny little bit, uh, but we headed up north to celebrate my mom and I's birthday because my mom's birthday is on, on Friday. Um, so we went out to dinner. I use that term loosely because we had dinner 4.30, um, but nonetheless, um, and then we went bowling, um, which was a lot of fun. Just something kind of low-key, but doing something to celebrate the birthdays. Anyway, so I barely got to stitch on Saturday. So when I got, when we got back, uh, I crashed almost immediately. So Sunday morning, um, I decided to continue working on this a little bit because I was part the way through this flower here and I wanted to get that finished, and then I decided to go with that one too. I also used, let's see, I used this for stitching extra credit. Uh, one of the tasks was border work, and 500 stitches had to go into the border, so there's a little over 500 stitches, but I did get the width of the design, so that's pretty fun. Um, and then I also used it for homework last week, 
300 stitches in green. And so this vine here and um, the bases of the flowers are in DMC 935. And I'm just, I'm smitten, absolutely smitten. I thought I was gonna get bored with the border or the letters or even the flowers because it's basically the same thing repeated seven times. And I just found it rhythmic and meditative and so good, <laughs> just so good. I was absolutely loving this and I am starting to understand the allure of samplers because I loved every minute of getting to work on this. I almost dropped my plans for Monogamania and went with this. I almost did um, because I could totally see myself working on this just straight through. So, love this. So excited about it. Okay, let's talk about something. I enabled Emily C with a sampler. It's one she already thought she had, but nonetheless. Seriously, put it on my tombstone. <laughs> I enabled Emily C with a sampler. Uh, and then she followed up and enabled me with one, so I'll show that next week. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I just, I was like, Holy crap. <laughs> um, anyway, so, so excited about that and um, love that project. Cannot wait to get back into it. I decided to, it's going to stay in my whips all year. I am going to work on it as and when I can. I'll try to fit it into some homework stuff in the future um, because, yeah, big love for that. Okay, Sunday was uh, Game of Thrones, Season 8, Episode 3. I'm not going to talk about it. No spoilers here. Um, I know that some people aren't able to watch within the first few days, and I'm not going to be that person. Uh, hashtag for the throne, Sal. So I finally got back to my Stark House banner. I didn't stitch near as much on Sunday as I thought I was going to. Ended up with a little headache. Um, so that wasn't very fun, but I did stitch a little bit on this. Preview here of what this will look like finished. I am stitching this on 32 count uh, Belfast and Valyrian steel from Hand Dyed by Stephanie. And I'm using DMC 762. Oh look, I've got a thread hanging. So the change that I made, uh, not a ton. I worked on this border. And the reason I worked on this border is that I was for certain that Stark here was off kilter by a few stitches. The long story short is that I thought that this pattern had overlap between the pages. It does not, so I placed the S incorrectly. Um, and so it was a little too far over. Um, and so I wanted to get this top border done so that I could see that and decide if I hated it. Turns out I did, it was asymmetrical and I just, nope, not a fan. So I was on the edge of having to rip this whole word Stark out. And then I thought, you know, there's a, a much easier way to fix this. Just move this leg of the H over a little bit. So now it's balanced. Yeah, that was a super easy fix and I was so glad of that because I was not looking forward to ripping this out. Um, those S's in particular are not super easy to stitch. There's just a lot of counting involved really, more than anything. Uh, so super easy fix and it looks good. And I am, I am pleased as punch. Uh, the Letters are done with long stitch for the back stitch, and so it's going to look a little wonky until I finish or frame this, um, whenever that may be. So there's that. That is my Stark House banner. The new format of things in School of Magical Stitches is that they announce the homework for the upcoming week uh, late Saturday night. However, you can't start until Monday or until the start 
of the school year as this week has kind of shaken up. Anyway, so they announced it Saturday night and we started Monday morning. And the task for this week was to pull our smallest project from the whip album that we posted a couple weeks ago um, and to work on it. Because this was a short week, because April ended after Tuesday, um, we got one stitch for ev or one point, excuse me, for every hundred stitches. And if you fully finished it in that time span, 50 bonus points. So highly attractive. Fortunately, I had something that was small enough. <laughs> um, I was really doubting my prospects for being able to accomplish this goal, but I was able to do so. Uh, the smallest whip in my album is Christmas at Winterberry Cabin by Brenda Gervais. Uh, the stitch count is like 160 something by 80 something. Um, so definitely my smallest piece. And then there's all that negative space. Um, and let's see, I brought my color palette so that you guys could see. Um, I used absolutely none of the called for colors and I didn't use everything in here. Um, but these were my options available to me. I also expanded out the color list. So yeah, there's a, a bunch of things going on in here. Classic Color Works, Gentle Arts, Weeks Dye Works, DMC, and Color and Cotton. I think that's everything. Yeah, lots and lots of stuff. But all hand-dyed cottons. So Monday, barely stitched. Did a couple hundred stitches and I was like, you know what, this is not going to happen. But that's okay. I will get my points for doing the stitches, no problem. Get up Tuesday, I had two books to finish that were on audio, um, and then Danny got in a big old box of games last week, and so we were going to get into one, but I had to learn how to play it, um, and so I had that to watch. So plenty of opportunity to sit and stitch and try to get this goal accomplished. And I did. I finished it at about 5.30 and then um, and then had to quick turn around and try to get it FFO'd. Okay. This FFO is awful. <laughs> I'm just going to put it out there. It's barely jammed in there. I couldn't find my pearl cotton and uh, for lacing, so it's not pretty. It doesn't look good. <laughs> it's very quickly pinned and the frame is awful. Um, it's just the wrong color for this. So I'm going to change how I FFO this. And so here it is, but it's awful. It's so bad. It's the wrong color frame. It's, it's the wrong style frame. Um, there's no glass because it broke in transit. Um, I think it's a pretty good size. It's an odd size uh, design. So that's a part of the issue. Um, here's, here's what the back looks like currently. Y'all, I didn't even take the fabric tag off. Um, and I used some, some pins to try to hold the fabric back because <laughs> I couldn't lace it. It's awful. It's so bad and I need to try again <laughs> effectively. I've got to try again um, as far as fully finishing this. Now I really probably need to hit it with a, I'm gonna get splinters from this frame because it's a rustic wood frame. <laughs> um, I need to hit it with an iron because down here you can see millennium issues. You can see a crease down the center there. This is bad, but I got an FFO um, even if it was temporary. So. So there's that and finished project. So let me quit harping on how bad the frame job is. By the way, total user problems, like all me. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I love this. I love how it turned out. I don't love my color choice for some of these trees. It is um, color and cotton mustard seed. So I thought it would be like a yellowy green, and it is, but it kind of gets lost in the fabric. The other thing that gets lost in the fabric are the stars. Can you see those three stars up there? Um, that's color and cotton bare copper. 
But the pattern, these stars are hard to see anyway, so it's okay. And I can see them in person. Santa, I think, turned out splendid. I love him. Yeah, I know. It's gassed Buckeye Scarlet, and that's like a pain to my nature. <laughs> but um, I, I do appreciate how it looks. I think it's really pretty. Uh, fabric is 28 count Kasha Linen in Crystal Ale from Picture This Plus. Took me a total of eight days to stitch. Oh, signature down there. Um, I asked Danny, I said, should I make my signature a berry off the vine or a snowflake? And he said snowflake, so it went in that corner. And yeah, eight total days to stitch. I think I said that. Um, third finish for stitch nine and sixth finish for year of whips. Fourth finish of the year. Pretty, pretty proud of that. Um, so I have figured out how I'm going to re-FFO this. I was watching Amy, uh, Amy Loves Toads, um, her video from two weeks ago. I don't know if she has any since then other than Mania stuff. I don't know. Um, but she showed her finish of the, um, Shed Your Grace on Me, the Plum Street Samplers, Kindred Stitchers club piece. Um, and it was... Uh, a flat ornament, and so I think that I'm probably going to try to do something like that. Um, it's charted to be done in a pillow, but I don't sew, and um, yeah, I think that that would be really pretty. And since this is an odd size, uh, finding a frame that's really going to work is kind of difficult. Um, so I think, but I think that it would be really pretty. Um, kind of in a flat ornament thing. And I can do that, I can do that. So, there's that. I just have to decide on trim, chenille, or, mm, not sure. Anyway, so there's that. That is my finish and FFO of the week. Wednesday morning. Yesterday morning we get up and it's mania. So excited. I love mania. Um, I love all of the people who decided to join in last minute. Um, I was almost among you. Um, but my voice of reason, Kim Spartan Stitcher, um, helps me, helps me not do that. <laughs> uh, so thank you Kim for that. Um, she helped me avoid the FOMO with another thing, um, but I sort of applied it to the to the mania FOMO. So anyway, so get up Wednesday morning, get my project loaded up. So excited to get going with Opus 2, aka Maggie by Long Dog Samplers. And I talked about the fact that each of these larger motifs that I had left, so this one here, this one, that one, and the one just below it. Um, I talked about three days for each of them. So yesterday I finished this one. <laughs> um, but I will, I'll talk about why that is. So that's what it will look like finished. And here is where I'm at currently. I am stitching this using DMC 924. My fabric is a 32 count linen from MCG Textiles in Oyster, and I've got stuff kind of hanging around. So, yep, yeah, I got that motif here finished, as well as these two little ones. Um, and then this morning I did that one, the little one below it, and I got started on this smallish medium one. Okay, so uh, here's why I got that first motif done yesterday. School of Magical Stitches. We don't have homework this week um, and we don't have homework for this week and next week because we are participating in the Quidditch World Cup. Um, and there are all sorts of special things going on with it. Basically, your team gets, I think it's one point per hundred stitches. 
Um, each match lasts for three days. There's also golden snitch opportunities and things going on. If you're participating in School of Magical Stitches, they do a much better job of explaining it. If you're not, it doesn't matter to you. <laughs> uh, so, at first I was going to be a seeker and go for the snitch, but it seemed like Gryffindor had a bunch of people who were willing to go for it in this first match. So I decided to back off and hold on to, to my project for that uh, until a little bit later. So then I was just gonna start working on this and cranking out some stitches. However, I picked this project for two extra credits for May and June in Magical Stitches and also in Ultimate Challenge. So that's 2,000 stitches. And so then I had a look at it the other day to try to pick something else for those tasks and honest to goodness, I just don't have anything else. I don't have anything in my 2019 whips and I'm not willing to break it. I'm just not. So I am trying to bust through those extra credits and the ultimate stitching challenge as fast as I possibly can so that I can start helping Gryffindor. Um, so 2000 stitches. I had to make sure that I got those 2000 stitches in this before I started applying it to the Quidditch stuff because if I did Quidditch and then this, like, I could run out of stitches before I get those tasks done. I just don't, I can't, I can't. So I'm trying to get that stuff done as fast as possible. Gryffindor, I will help out in the, certainly the later matches. Um, if I don't get this goal accomplished, I guess by tomorrow, I think tomorrow is the last day of the match, the first match. So anyway, so that's why I rushed through and tried to get this motif done. Um, so my plan is to get this motif done, the smaller, medium-ish one up here, and then get started on the one below it. And I think that that will get my extra credit and ultimate stitching challenge done. I think that'll, that'll knock that out. Um, and we'll go from there. I... I'm at about a thousand stitches total um, between yesterday and today, so I'm I'm well on my way. So there's that. Um, so yesterday I posted on the Stitch Mania Facebook group. Monogamania is here. Place your bets, people. How long do you think it's going to take me to finish this? And I heard anywhere from a month to a day and a half, and I laughed so hard <laughs> at a day and a half. I laughed real hard at four days, um, but I think that seven days, I could do it in seven days, I think. Um, we'll see. Uh, it is Stitchathon weekend this weekend, and uh, Danny's gonna go play some board games. Um, so it's gonna be just me stitching like a, like a mad woman. Um, however, Sunday is the DC Area Metro Stitchers meetup which always, um, it just means I don't stitch near as much, but that's okay. The stitching with a group means more than that. Um, so I think that I could have this done on Tuesday, <laughs> which is wild to me because I started this over four years ago, over four years ago. And here I am like, yeah, I think seven days will do it. So I'm really excited to, uh, to get this finished. Can I do it in another six days? I don't know, maybe that's too much. We'll see, we'll see what today brings. Um, so there's that. That is Opus 2. Um, so I wanted to talk to you guys about, I talked about um, a method for how I stitch a little bit faster. You'll see on my needle minder over here, I have two needles. And what I do is I preload both of those needles. Um, so I've got two needles ready to go. Now I do the um, loop start on the front and so there is there's a part that helps because I've got two needles already loaded up ready to go. Sometimes I'll even bump it up to three um, if I feel like juggling three needles. This helps because it means that I'm not using the same needle um, so consistently. 
I rust through needles and I don't like stitching up with them when they get that tarnish on them. So this sort of breaks up the stitching between the two needles. The other thing that I do, and you can see, I gotta set it over here. Uh, you can see evidence of it over here is you see these, these threads hanging here. So what I do is when I finish stitching down here and my thread is almost out um, or it's getting, it's getting frayed, then I will park it up here. And I do that for an entire length. So all six strands of an entire length. And then I go back and I, in mass, weave them under, clip them, put them in my ore jar. So what this means is that, so I have my first needle, I stitch, get 30, 40, 50 stitches out of it, park it up here, grab my other needle, get going immediately. And then I just do an in mass weave under. And that, I think, has helped me speed up a little bit. Because I'm going to flip to the back, weave it under, clip it, load a new needle. Like, that's, this streamlines it for me a little bit. So that's what I've done with this. And, yep, love this project. Love it. I'm going to miss it severely. Um, I talked, I think I mentioned last week that this is my last Wong Doc samplers. And Ingeborg was like, Oh, no more long dogs in your sam in your stash. We're gonna have to fix that. And I, I responded to Angabor and I said, "Listen, I've got plenty of long dogs in my stash. I just don't have any started, and no starts 2019. Um, that might have to change. I am contemplating a New Jersey retreat start, um, but we'll sort of cross that bridge when we get to it. That's three months away. I'm so excited for Jersey." You know, it's May, and a year ago, we were getting ready for Jersey 2018. Yeah, I'm excited. So, there is that. Okay, let's get into plans. Um, real quick, my immediate plans are Opus 2. Opus 2 until it's done. You know, because I'm finishing that way faster than I think I had originally thought I was going to, um, I may go to Queen Anne's Lace after the fact and try to get that finished this month. That would be pretty cool um, to have two Mania finishes during May. But we'll see. We'll see what happens, how long it takes me with Opus 2, etc., etc. Okay. Uh, so that is it really for the official plans. But now let's talk about May, June, Stitching Extra Credit. I thought that I would go through the projects that I'll be working on for these various tasks, uh, just in case it might help you guys figure out what you're going to work on from your things. Um, and so we'll go from there. Plus, it's like a mini whip parade, which is always fun. All right, uh, so task number one, stitch on an item you would find in the Great Lake. You must stitch on the actual item, and uh, things you might be able to find would be mermaids, grindylows, I guess, if you have a grindylo, um, the giant squid, uh, fish, water, shells and sand, um, things like that. So. Um, I decided to go with a mermaid. And one of my Stitch 9 pieces this year is Under the Moonlight by Passione Ricamo. A sal from way too long ago. About five years. Yep. Um, so that's what she will look like finished. And this is on 28 Count Cash Out Linen in Lady of the Lake by Hand Dyed by Stephanie. And... She could use 500 stitches. 500 stitches in skin would get me awfully close to having the skin finished, which would be great. I don't have a whole ton left to do here, um, as I'm sure I've talked about. This thing is huge. Um, just the skin. She's got some hair coming off the back, and then it's beading, um, and I am so excited to get to that point. Now, I have talked over the last four and a half, five years about the, the border here. And the top border is supposed to be just a long stretch of beads. Nope, not doing it. I am not doing that. Um, 
So I have talked over the years, maybe a petite treasure braid, maybe a blending filament with a DMC, something something like that. I have settled on uh, petite silk lame braid because I worked with that on my Chatelaine Poison Garden early, nope, late last year. And uh, that's a joy to stitch with. It's got some sparkle to it. It's a little extra special. I will still do the beads that kind of weave in and out of these gold leafy bits. Um, but yeah, the long stretches all the way across, I'm gonna do in Petite Silk Lame. And I think I'm gonna do like a, a white or an off-white. Uh, since those beads are pearl, something like that. Uh, so that's my plan for that. And I am looking forward to spending some time on her to get her finished. Gosh, I would love to have this just done. Just done. I'm in no big hurry to have her framed. I just want her finished. Get these old whips out of here. Get them out. <laughs> so there is Under the Moonlight. Okay, task number two, stitch on a project that has an item you would find at a winter ball. Couples, fancy dresses or suits, snowflakes, food that you might find at a ball. So fancy stuff, not cheeseburgers. Um, and so 500 stitches on that project. And I decided to go with Queen Anne's Lace from Nora Corbett. So preview here of what this will look like finished. Um, I talked last time about how I went with figuring out what my WIPCO projects were and then choosing my whips from that. And since this is a WIPCO for May, I will work on her. And she's upside down. So there we go. Uh, she's wearing a fancy dress. And even though it is based on the flower of the same name, the Queen Anne's Lace, um, it kind of looks like snow a little bit with the cascading fuzzy bits. Technical terms only. And so, looking forward to getting back to this. This is 28 count cash shell linen as well. Uh, this is Crystal Wren from Picture This Plus. So, there is that. Lots of 28 count today. Okay. Up uh, next, task number three, stitch in a project that has an eye uh, to represent Mad Eye Moody. And so I am pulling out a project where there are a total of four eyes. Only two of which are open, but that's okay. So the swans have eyes, and she's got eyes underneath those eyelids, presumably. Maybe she doesn't. Anyway, <laughs> uh, that creepy thought put aside in this moment. Uh, AKA Mika McKenna. 25 count cream Lugana from Zweigart. Uh, stitched one over one full cross. I just showed this recently, but for solidarity, for consistency. There I am on page 22, and like I said, one of my major goals for May was to get page 22 finished, so this will definitely get some love. Project, or task number four. Stitch on a project that features a mode of transportation. Boat, carriage, car, something. Uh, and so I will be working on Halloween at Hawkorn Hollow. Uh, let's see, we've got a train, we have a boat, we have a horse, all modes of transportation. So that will work. This is not a you have to stitch on the item, it just has to be in the project. So uh, that will work for me. And this is on 40 count Newcastle linen in Country Mocha from Zweigart. And I am working on the block with the horse. So block number three. That is the end of my goal for this year with this project, so <sighs> it's going to get done. Um, I'm just going to be a little sad about it, but that's okay. Three blocks in a year, I will, I'll be super, super pleased with that. And uh, so yeah, I'll work on this for that task. Okay, this is a fun one. Stitch the Imperious Curse. Something you saw that made you lose control and had to stitch it. So, about a year ago, a little short of a year ago, uh, June 2018, StitchCon 2018, walking around keepsakes, putting stuff in the bucket, as I talked about when I got all of the haul, um, 
looking up at all the beautiful models, I see this stopped me dead in my tracks. Had to figure out who it was, what it was. Keepsakes did not have it in stock anymore. Went home, ordered it, started it last October. Total, total, like this project made me stitch it. So uh, this is Stacy Nash Primitives Halloween Jack Sewing Roll. I have a lot of these, these must stitch things. But this is something that I would really like to finish um, whenever I work on it because you'll see here in a second, but I just have basically the rest of this border, a few words of the text, the goat dog, and the cat dog. No, I guess that really is a goat. Anyway, just a few things left to, to stitch this and have it finished so that I can maybe send it to a finisher to finish into a sewing roll for me. Uh, so this is on, well, it's living in my, uh, this is Coraline's Garden, I think uh, is the name of the, of the project sleeve from Love You More Studio. And fabric is 32 Count Belfast in Claire from Hand Dyed by Stephanie. Stitching it using DMC, or nope, Anchor Black. Whoo! Yeah. So yeah, like not a whole ton left to do. Oh, cat dog is done. So that's good. I have the moon to do. And the rest of this border. Um, but yeah, I would really like to get this finished. Task number six. Stitch on something that you might find in a maze. So for example, grass, bushes, geometric design, um, and we have to stitch on the actual thing. Well, Opus 2 by Long Dog Samplers is covered in Quaker motifs, which are very geometric. Um, and so that's what I chose to do for, for that task. And um, so I have actually already finished that one. So there's that. I'm not going to show it again. I'm not going to pull it back up because you just saw it. Task number seven, stitch on a project that has words. It must have words, not simply letters. Um, and so I decided to go with Give Thanks by The Drawn Thread. Living in my Evertotes Gobble Till You Wobble project bag. Love this project bag. Uh, and so Give Thanks by The Drawn Thread. This is what it will look like finished. My pattern got a little bent out of shape here in the project bag. That's okay. Stitching this on 32 count. Vintage Country Mocha from Zweigart. Um, and the reason I decided to go with this one is because it was pulled as a Whipka project in June. So this will definitely get some love in June. At least 500 stitches. And so that's where I'm starting with that. Uh, next, stitch on a project that begins with a letter found in Goblet. Uh, and so I chose Opus 2 for this because, oh, starts um, in goblet. I could change this out, but I decided against it. I'm just gonna go with it. Um, I'm already like 80% of the way through that task, so might as well just finish it up. So there's Opus 2. Uh, task number nine, stitch on something you once loved but haven't touched in over six months. Or if you worked on everything, blah, blah, blah. Y'all don't need that. Um, so I decided to go with Rose Fairy by Joan Elliott. Aside from the fact that this is my oldest whip, um, I started this with the purpose of giving it to my stepdad's girlfriend way back when. They broke up, so my love for it kind of went where a little bit. Uh, and I also haven't worked on this in over six months. The last time I worked on it was for Joan Elliott July last year, obviously. Uh, so this is on 28 Count Lugana in Confetti by Picture This Plus. And that's where I'm starting from. Since this is my new fancy lady project, focus week, what have you, starting in June, at least 500 stitches will go into her. Very excited about this. Very excited to, to work on her. Hopefully get her done this year, that'd be great. Okay, uh, task number 10, the final task is stitch on a project that has something that lays eggs. Um, this is only 200 stitches. Um, and 
I went with In This Moment because it features swans. Swans lay eggs. So there is that. Um, and then the 11th task is watch Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire and Stitch, but no project specified. So there's that. So that is it for the, the plans for the extra credit. Subject to change if necessary. Hopefully I can get through them all. Fortunately, finishing out two in the first two days of the month, <laughs> that helps. Um, so there is, there is the plan with that. Okay, let's do stash here real quick. And by real quick, I mean real quick. All I've got here is a nest egg. Um, that is, now I will admit that I haven't been to my mailbox in over a week. So there could be something else in there that I forgot. Um, but for now, this is what I've got here. Um, so nest egg, this is a very Christmassy color palette and I don't think I'm gonna go through each of them. Uh, but there's some greens and neutrals. What's that gray? Gray, green, mountain mist, that's pretty. That one there. Uh, then we have some more neutrals, a couple of browns. Very shades of brown with some green tones. That's really pretty. And that's shown up fairly color accurate. Yeah, that's pretty good. Natural light, man. Yeah. And then also some pinks. So again, pretty color accurate. I like it. So there's that. That's it for the stash, <laughs> uh, which is probably a good thing uh, because the stitch from stash hole has grown a little bit. I blame Emily, uh, as we talked about. So let's go ahead and switch gears and we are going to talk, let's do knitting next. Okay, in knitting, I have two projects to show you and a third, but I'm not gonna show it to you this time. And that's because I've had two new cast-ons <laughs> in the last week. All right, so first of all, let's go with the one that you have seen before. Um, this is Moonlit Path by Lisa Haynes. Lisa Haynes. And this is a super quick uh, slip stitch color work shawl done in worsted weight yarn, so it knits up real big, real fast. And so I would probably be done with this if I didn't have those two new cast-ons, but there you go. Um, and so here is where I am at currently. Just kind of panning down. It's just that same pattern repeated. I, it reached a point where I didn't even need my pattern anymore. I was able to I memorize the pattern, I suppose. And then just yesterday, I joined in my third color for the edge here. Uh, so this pattern is great. It's basically a knit to your stash. Um, and so I got 12 and a half repeats out of my purple yarn. Um, and then I decided to switch to the border from there. Didn't really feel like playing yarn chicken from that point. Uh, so I just switched to my border from there. That way I have enough yarn to do tassels because one of the optional add-ons are these tassels, um, which I think are actually kind of kind of pretty. So I will probably do those if I can figure out how to do them and attach them. Anyway, so then I added in my border color and it's closer, but it's not so pale Tiffany. It's more pale Tiffany that got dunked in the chlorine. <laughs> That's kind of what it looks like. Anyway, so this is, um, all of the yarns I'm using are Malabrigo uh, in their Rios base, which is a plied worsted, I believe it's 100% superwash merino. Um, and the colors are natural, which is the white, um, purpuras, which is the purples, and I'll talk about that here in just a second, and water green. So there is that. Now, while I was knitting, particularly the later repeats, um, where the yarn wrapped around my finger, it would leave dye on my finger. So it was bleeding a little bit just from knitting it. And so I got a little bit panicky 
if this bleeds when I go to wash it, because I will want to wash and block it so that I can really get that, get some drape put into it. Um, I mean, I knitted at a larger needle size, so there already is more drape to it than there would have if I had done it to the pattern, but I would just like it to be really good and drapey. I need to wash and block it. Um, and if this purple bleeds, then my natural is not going to look so crisp. And it kind of needs that for this color work to, to work. Um, but I got some really great advice from a lot of you um, to use color catchers. With my leftover purpuras, I did um, some little test uh, samples. So I put a... Uh, one gram bit of the natural and one gram of the purpuras in each of um, a cold water bath and a warm water bath and let it sit there for a couple hours. When I came back to it in the warm water bath, the natural did, it was off color. Um, so I'm going to use some color catchers just to ensure that everything goes okay. Um, from what I understand, it works really well. So I am I'm looking forward to giving that a test run and hopefully I just don't get too much bleeding. So there's that. But that's not until I get this border done and this border, it's ribbed, but it's like a zigzag rib, which is kind of annoying. Uh, so there's no definition in it just yet. I've got to get more into it. I think I'm only halfway through the first repeat and um, so yeah, long ways to go on that border. So there is Moonlit Path. Thursday, my birthday. I get up, I'm all excited, it's my birthday. Gosh, that feels funny. Oh my gosh, my eyes are swelling. <laughs> I had uh, some sort of allergic reaction to something and my this one really puffed up and this one slightly puffed up. I was not looking super cute for my birthday. And as a result, stitching, uh, I had to wait for the swelling to go down. So I didn't stitch until much later on my birthday. But it's my birthday. So I'm going to do what I want. <laughs> and so I decided to have a new cast on. And this is yarn that I bought last year. Um, Eat Sleep Knit has a badge for ordering yarn on your birthday. And so I ordered this. Uh, this is Blue Moon Fiber Arts. Cake DK uh, in the big brain blue colorway. So there is the yarn band and it is 100% merino. Um, did y'all see the yardage there? 765 yards approximately. Y'all wanna know what cake DK looks like caked up? I had cake for my birthday. <laughs> Let's just compare it to the water green. <laughs> so yeah yep pretty pretty hefty hefty cake um, and I bought this with the intention of turning it into a boneyard shawl by Stephen West and I am doing a boneyard shawl but I'm gonna make this into a gigantic schlanket which is a shawl blanket um, this is a really simple pattern um, you can totally tell that this is early on in Stephen West's designing career because it's real basic. Like Today's Stephen West would never design something like this. Um, I think he's just gotten more comfortable with who he is. Anyway, so it's real basic and I have complicated a little bit. So I decided to go with two color. And so here is what I've got so far. So, uh, my alternate color is Knit Picks Swish Worsted in the Dove Heather colorway. Cake DK is a, um, it's a DK, uh, it's like a heavy sport to, to DK kind of weight, and Swish Worsted really is pretty worsted. I'm knitting this on eights, I think. I got ends everywhere. Let's see. Yeah, this is eights. So, Moonlit Path is on ten and a halfs. Uh, this is a much 
tighter gauge. Uh, and so what happens is the big brain blue is definitely more sparse. It's not as dense and the gray is really dense. But I think it's okay. I don't think it looks bad. Um, I think it's going to work out just fine. It does mean that the, the gray sections curl so much more than the blue sections do, but I'm not mad at it. So Boneyard is it's a stockinette shawl with a garter ridge separating the sections. Originally it was designed with one color. In addition, the center spine uh, was the increases used are make ones, which is um, a make one left and a make one right on alternate sides, as well as here at the edges. But I like yarn overs better than make ones, so my center spine is bookended by yarn overs, and my edge is done in a yarn over too. I just like them better. I like making yarn overs. Um, they're easier to spot. Uh, it's easier to count. Uh, so that's what I decided to go with. So I'm aiming to do a section a week. This is slow burn because this thing is going to be ginormous. I have no interest in using it this summer. Um, we have already seen 87, and so like it's going to be a hot summer, I can already tell. Uh, so yeah, there's, there's no hurry on this. If I could do a section a week, um, stockinette gets boring pretty quick like. Um, so if I can do a section a week, I'll be, I'll be pleased. So there is my boneyard. And I really like it. And to my Ravenclaw friends, yeah, I know it kind of looks a little Ravenclaw covered, colored. But legit, I kind of feel like a Ravenclaw sometimes. <laughs> I also feel like a Slytherin sometimes. And a Hufflepuff. So it's okay. So there is that. Now I have something else that I cast on uh, this weekend. Uh, but I will show that next time. I'm barely into it. Um, I ordered yarn for my birthday this year, and one of the badges for Eat Sleep Knit is to cast on immediately when your yarn arrives, and so that's what I did, but um, yeah, I got, I got about an inch into it, and it doesn't look like anything yet. So there is, there is the knitting segment. All right, so let's get to our last topic, and that is going to be books. Now, I don't have one nor two, but I have three books that I have finished since we last spoke. Three. Um, so that's pretty, it's pretty exciting. Uh, so the first book I finished was Runaway by Harlan Coben. I talked about this book pretty, uh, pretty at length last week. And I finished the audiobook on our way up north. Uh, I liked this book so much that I bought a hardcover copy for my mom for her birthday. Because <laughs> um, she and I both really like Harlan Coben. So um, I thought that I would share that with her. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I gave it four and a half stars because there were some weird things. Um, and then at one point, I figured it all out. And I always get bummed <laughs> when I figure it out. Um, I didn't figure all of it. Uh, there were still some moments, but like, nonetheless, uh, I figured out a large section of it. Anyway, um, so it's a, I think it's what they call a domestic thriller. It's basically a family thriller. Um, the short version of the synopsis is... Uh, we have this wealthy family, uh, Simon, his wife Ingrid, they have three children. Their oldest daughter, um, in her 20s, uh, becomes a drug addict and effectively runs away. In a last-ditch effort to save her, they start looking for her. Um, gangs get involved, hitmen get involved, uh, Drugs, drug lords, drug dealers. Um, it gets violent. It gets intense. Um, there's a little bit of cult sort of uh, stuff going on. 
It's very, very fascinating. It's really a really strong book. If you like thrillers like that, um, suspense novels, check out Harlan Coben. Seriously, uh, you will you will thank me later. Um, he's he's a great writer. I think there's a couple of his books that I have missed over the years, so I may try to get a hold of those. Uh, so there is that. Okay, the second book I finished was. Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. So there's that. I finished it mm, noon on Tuesday. So like coming down to the wire <laughs> on these. Uh, but I did get it finished on Tuesday. And what can I say? I mean, it's Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. This is so good. And I love... I normally get really annoyed by movie adaptations that stray too far from the book, but I actually kind of like that this one is not exactly like the movie. There are some changes that were made, um, and I don't know, it just kind of makes this book special because, like, if you really want to get into Harry Potter, then you should read the books because that's the story. That's the real story. Anyway, I just, I like that. And I super loved this, and it was just, you know, hairy. Anyway, okay, uh, so then, next is uh, the final book that I finished. I finished it at 12.15 a.m. my time, which was in plenty of time with the um, reading extra credit for year three. I read, pay attention here, the Emperor's Soul by Brandon Sanderson. Now, last week I talked about the fact that I was reading a book called The Emperor's Blades by Brian Staveley. And Saturday afternoon, I, I got it in my head. I was like, there's no way I'm going to finish this book. I wasn't reading enough of it to not only get through it by Tuesday, but like I wasn't sucked into it. I just, I was at a point where I was ready to let that task go. So without looking for it, I stumbled across this book, The Emperor's Soul by Brandon Sanderson. And I talked about why I was reading The Emperor's Blades. It was for BS for Series Black for that reading task. Well, Brandon Sanderson is also BS. Okay, here we go. Now, the Emperor's Soul is officially the second book in a duology. However, you can read them separately, and it's not a full-length novel. It's a what I would call long short fiction. It's 175 pages, but it's also not a full-length novel. And you can read them separately. Supposedly, if you have read Atlantis, then you will pick up on some things in The Emperor's Soul uh, that those of us who haven't read Elantris wouldn't necessarily. But other than that, that's it. They take place on the same world in Brandon Sanderson's universe called the Cosmere. Um, but other than that, they're just related in series title, effectively. And it was so good. <laughs> Brandon Sanderson is... He's something else, man. He's got just the, the best magic systems. And these are sort of high order thinking. I mean, these are magic systems that don't exist in the real world. And he just explains them in a way that just makes sense. Because this book is so short, it's really hard for me to give a synopsis. But we have basically, we have this girl named Shay or Shy. But I think it's Shay. Um, and she is what is known as a forger. So she takes the essence of a thing, um, a table, an animal, in her particular case, artwork, and she can recreate it. It's so hard to explain this. <laughs> Brandon Sanderson does a really great job of explaining it. But so effectively, she's a criminal because she has created a copy of a very famous piece of art and stolen the original and she got caught and so she was sentenced to death 
in this world, forgers are no good, like no bueno. Um, they are persecuted and they um, are perceived as talentless and incapable artists. Um, so they could use their their abilities to create art and instead they choose to copy other people. And so the people responsible for the government, like they just don't like forgers to begin with. Forgery, you know? Um, so she is sentenced to death and she happens to be really good at it. She happens to be really good at forgery. And so she is hired by the, the council um, to the emperor to help them solve this big problem. To be honest, I probably did a horrible job of explaining that. You should read the synopsis on Goodreads. Um, I'll link it down below. I always link the books that I talk about. Um, check it out. It's a really fast read. The audiobook is only four hours. Uh, it's it's just really good, and it meets all the requirements for, for everything. So I was able to get that task completed, and I really enjoyed it. And it makes me all that much more excited to get into remembering parts of Emperor's Soul. Um, it makes me all that much more excited to get into the Way of Kings. Uh, different world, but same universe as Elantris. Um, I'm so excited. Um, as far as currently reading... I uh, started Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn yesterday, um, and I am going to start Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire today, I think. Um, I'm going to start that on audiobook, um, just to get some quick headway into it and go from there. But that's all that I have for books. Um, I think that my plan moving forward is to only talk about books if I have finished something, um, rather than giving synopses of the same book week after week after week. That seems kind of silly. So that's it. That's all I've got for you here today. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your continued support of me and my channel. Um, thank you for the birthday wishes. That is so good. Um, Y'all are my favorite people. And much love to you. Okay, everybody, I'm headed off. As always, happy stitching. Be kind. See you next time.